In this video, we'll look at customizing the self-service site provisioning process using an app for SharePoint. By leveraging the app model, we're going to be able to deliver this customization both in an on-premise farm and into SharePoint Online. To understand why we do this, let's take a look at the out-of-the-box start a site process in SharePoint 2013. So I'm going to go out to the sites area of my my site. And you can see all the different sites that I'm following here at the bottom. But up at the top, I have a link that says start a new site. If I click on that, I'm going to get a very simple dialog to create a new site. And you can see that ultimately I just give it a name. I give my site a name. Well, what do I get? Well, what I'm going to end up with is a team site. We don't really provide any flexibility out of the box for you to select a different template. So if I really wanted maybe one of the new community sites or a publishing site or maybe a blog, that's why we might want to deliver our own form here and take over that provisioning process. Another reason we might do this is when I get that team site, it's actually going to end up being a subsite under a specific location that it shows here. Now, as an administrator, I actually have flexibility in, in where that provisions, but I don't have flexibility in saying it's going to be a subsite versus a, a full site collection. And, and I'm a big proponent of site collections being better for you know, scalability over time. So if I wanted to allow users to end up with a site collection, again, we can do that by controlling the provisioning process. One of the final reasons we might do this is to activate certain features as part of that provisioning process. So again, you know, if, I, if all I get is a team site out of the box, a team site might be great. Maybe that's what I want. But maybe we want to push functionality to all our team sites. On, on premise, I might do that through what we call feature stapling, where I take certain features and I activate those as part of the provisioning process. So maybe all team sites get our branding package. Now in SharePoint Online, we don't support feature stapling. What we do support is app stapling where I can say, you know, this app is going to be added to all of a certain type of site or all sites at a certain, you know, URL path. Um, but apps aren't really the best mechanism for delivering all the functionality I might want. There might be actual features I want to activate or there might be branding that I want to apply. And, and again, an app really isn't the most efficient for applying branding. So what we're going to do is deliver an app that's going to take over this form and take over that provisioning process. And SharePoint provides the mechanism for doing that, both inside central administration or if I'm in SharePoint online, the admin area for SharePoint, I can go specify a different form to display here. And we're going to deliver that form through an app. So let's first take a look at the app and then we'll go and deliver it in this form. So I'm going to go and click cancel here and I'm going to go over to an app catalog where I've gone ahead and deployed that app. So if I go to my app catalog um, and go to all my site content, you can see I have a number of different sites here, but here's the one that we want to look at. We have this thing called a site creation wizard and that's our app that we've uh, deployed out to the app catalog that's going to allow users to go off and create a site of their choice. Let me zoom out here and we'll click on this wizard. Now when you load this, it's going to look like a similar form to you know, starting the site. The important thing here is that I'm going to have the ability to specify a different template. You can see I can pick a blog, a community, a project, a publishing site, or a team site. Um, I'm also going to have the flexibility to provide a secondary owner of the site. And that's really important, especially if we do things like some of the self-service um, disposition of sites um, you know if I'm calling you know sending out emails as part of that nag feature and the person left the organization SharePoint might end up cleaning up a site that really wasn't ready for deletion so it's always good to have a secondary um, owner of a site and that's one of the things that we have provided here now what's cool about this app is we it's very flexible for me to configure both the types of sites people can create and how those different types of sites are created so what I'm going to do is as an admin, I can go up to the top here and click on app settings. And what that'll do is it'll actually take me into a library that's in the app web. And you can see here I have, I can basically upload a little icon for all of the different types of sites that I want a user to be able to provision. And you can see I can specify the site template, 
the base path on where it's going to create that site, whether or not it creates a subsite or a site collection. And then if I want to apply a brand, I can specify a master page here. A few of the other kind of ancillary things is if it's a site collection, we want to specify storage limits and maybe user code limits. And we've even specified those in there. So this is a very flexible model. I could go off and throw another site type in here. And when people go off to provision, they could easily go and make that part of their provisioning um, selections. So what we want to do is we want to deliver that form that we were just in, in that dialog. And that's actually pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do is go over to SharePoint administration in the um, online portal. And under settings on the side, you can see settings over here, we're going to have the option to specify our own custom form. So here it is under settings, you can see here's start a site and we can allow the users to define, you know, out of the box, I can specify a different location for sites to be created if I want people to just create those team sites. But again, in our case, we want a full custom experience. And so what we're going to do is use this option here that says use a form at a specified URL. And we're just going to specify the URL to our, our app page. Behind the scenes when this launches, the app page is going to manage all the kind of OAuth things that need to occur. It's going to basically jump back and go and, and get a, a context token, get an access token, do all the things it needs to. So we're just going to go ahead and specify the URL to our app. Actually, have it here and say OK. Now if we go back to the personal site, we can see that it loads a completely different form. It's our custom form where now I can go specify the template. I can give it a name. I can provide owners. I can do all that in, in this custom form that we're being delivered. Now, this is an important time maybe to pause and talk about what this is going to do behind the scenes. In order for our app to really control the provisioning process, be able to create subsites anywhere and site collections even in our tenancy, it's going to need a very high level of permissions. In fact, it's going to need full control on the tenant. Now, that's, that's some really high permissions. In fact, this, it's important to note that an app like this, there's no way it's going to end up in the Office Store. Microsoft's just not going to allow an app with this level of permissions to end up in the store. What you can do, though, is as an organization, you could develop this in-house and put it into the app catalog like I have. So. Basically, this is, this is really exclusive for my organization. In fact, behind the scenes, I even hard-coded some things like my, my tenancy IDs and things like that because this is really for my tenancy, my organization. So I'm going to walk through um, one of each of the different options here. Um, and, and in both cases, I'm going to create a subsite and I'm going to create one that's going to end up with a, a full site collection. And what I want to do is in both of these, it's going to apply a brand. I think this is one of the interesting things because this is there's really no other good effective way of doing this in Office 365 other than through this provisioning process. So the, the site collections tend to take a lot longer to complete. So we'll start with that one and kind of let that kind of go in the background. And then we'll um, come back and, and do a community site, which will be a subsite. So first, let's select team here. And we'll call this team um, Richard MTC team. And I can come in here and I can give it a different URL if I want to make it a little more simple. We'll call it Richard MTC team. I'll give this a description. This is a demo site collection using our provisioning. App. I could specify some other admins. So if I wanted maybe Ann, I can come out here. You can see that it does nice people picker. That's something that I had to develop to really emulate the experience that I get within SharePoint. I'll go ahead and click Ann and I'll go ahead and say create. Now behind the scenes, this is going to start creating a site collection for us. That's how the team site was specified for us. So if I were to go back to site collection administration, and refresh the screen, what we'll see here, hopefully if it's made it that far, is that we should see a site collection that's in the process of being provisioned. All right, maybe refresh one more time. Now 
there you go. You can see that it's it's in the process of provisioning that Richard MTC team site. It's actually creating that site collection. So we've we've able to in our app use some of the tenancy objects to create site collections. Now that'll crank away for a while. So we'll actually let that kind of go do its thing and let's create a new one of these. So let me grab my URL here and we will uh, do that in another location. So I'm gonna go back to sites and this time I'm gonna create a community site. The community site is gonna end up creating a subsite under a communities portal. So actually this is the communities portal that we want that site to um, roll up underneath. So this is a nice roll up of all of our different communities. So let's create a new one here. I'm gonna go and say new site and let's do maybe the running club. So I'm gonna create a community site for the running club. Again, I'll give it a URL. I could go with the kind of the typical one, but I'll do something a little easier here. And we'll say community site for the Contoso running club. Um, I, I'll go ahead and give this Anne again. She'll be my secondary owner. And I'll go ahead and say create. Now this one we can actually wait for. It doesn't take near as long. When this is done, it's actually going to go and redirect us to the brand new site. So I could sit here and wait if I want. I could also just close the dialogue. So in this case, if I was, if I was sick of waiting of this other one, I could go ahead and just close the dialogue. Um, but in this case, uh, the community site actually happens pretty soon. So it looks like it's done. And now it's redirected us to the running club team site. Now you can see that it applied our brand to this. So it actually applied the master page. Um, in this case, it's a, it's a master that, that's more for a publishing site. So it doesn't look all that great. But here we've gotten a, a community site self-service provisioned on our own using our app. So what we'll do now is I'll wait for our team site to finish provisioning. So you can see again, there's our, our team site, which is a full site collection. It's going to take a little bit longer because it is a site collection, but we'll let that finish. And when it does, we'll go out to that team site and we'll see if for the site collection, it also applied our brand. That's a little bit more of a complex one because we can't just reference a master page that it, that lives somewhere else. It's going to have to live within the site collection. So we'll let this finish provisioning. So it looks like our site has finished provisioning. So at this point, we should be ready to go in and take a look at this site and see if it set everything up all right for us. So let me go and click on this. And you can see here it has all the, you know, the primary administrator. Um, it has, you know, my, my storage quota that we set from that configurable list. You know, there, that's where we set how much storage quota we wanted and what the resource limit was for user code, which was set at 300. Uh, but let me go ahead and, and click on this site and let's go into it. And you can see here's our team site. And again, we have our brand applied to it. So hopefully this illustrates the power of owning that provisioning process and allowing users to create sites through that provisioning process, provide them with more flexibility in the types of sites they create and have, have a little bit more flexibility in what gets added to those sites.